I'm 71 years old and worked on the Wall Street trading floor surrounded by at least 2,000 traders and clerks for 20 years. Then I worked at the newspaper for 10 years. So I've been around a lot of different human personalities. When I met my narcissist, I told him that he acted just like a best friend I had for 20 years and stopped talking to this friend, mainly because I got tired of his hatred for women and religion. Well, I should have broken off our relationship, my relationship, I should say, with the narcissist on our first date, especially when he said he liked me because I didn't get upset when he told African-American jokes. He was an Italian-American. My name is Eric. And in this podcast, I'm going to try to decipher the difference between narcissist personality disorder Con artists, piss poor, and indulent, indul excuse my expression, indolent and slutful people. Welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. Let's begin. The words indolent and slutful are common synonymous or synonymous with the word lazy. While all these words mean not easily aroused to activity, lazy suggests a disinclination to work or to take the trouble to look for work. In my drinking and drug days, I've come across a lot of men who search out women and or gay men who would take them under their roof, feed them, and mainly supply their addiction, whichever it is, drugs, alcohol, whatever, clothe them, or they do all this on the pretense that these so-called men who are down on their luck, we were helping, helping them up, you know, helping them out to look for work. So we're at work, we're bringing our ass to pay our bills, trying to help this person, whoever it was, and he's home drinking, eating our food, drinking our liquor, and watching TV all day. And then when you get home, what happened, honey? Did you look for work today? And they will say, well, they'll say whatever lie they say. Now, I consider that laziness. Then there's another term I like to use. Um, I like to use a thing called piss poor. Now, piss poor, I call them piss poor. I know the, the, the saying is people who ain't got a pot to piss in. They do have jobs, these people. But it appears they live beyond their means. They have jewelry, tons of fancy clothes, expensive cars. They live in high-rise apartments. And constantly begging you for money to pay their bills. You know the saying, these people who would beg, borrow, and steal to pay their bills. Back in the 60s, uh, there were people that I knew was living out of a Cadillac. You know, they have a Cadillac. They work all day, but they could only afford their Cadillac, but they couldn't afford food, they couldn't afford an apartment, but they can afford a Cadillac. 
Anyway, it's called Keeping Up with the Joneses back then. I don't know what the hell you call them now. So anyway, the next are the con artists. Now we all know what a con artist is. I know what they were back in the 60s and 70s. Bear with me because I'm getting to all these different... Uh, they got these different, what you call it, um, things they call human, human personalities. But anyway, you got the con artists. And what do con artists do? Almost, they're almost like the, the, they mainly like the one I said, the laziness. They're like, uh, they, they use relationship or sex, secrets, lies, tricks, or tactics. Many con artists use to manipulate people to get what they want. Oftentimes, destroying their victims' lives forever. Con artists gain a person's confidence so they can have easy access to the victim's money, trust, and friendship. Now, we know what we know about con artists. I just told you about um, what women would do, some, some gay men would do to keep, to keep that no good negro around or no good person around. Self-esteem, they don't want to be lonely, low self-esteem, or I know in some cases, especially if the, if the, if the guy is older, they'll keep, keep a young guy around who's not doing anything but laying up on him because the, the, excuse my expression, because the dick is good. That's back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I guess they're still doing it today, I'm not sure. Well, now I want to give you the definition of a narcissist, a narcissist personality disorder. Let's talk about that now. We talked about lazy people who could, who could just as easily be a con artist. Some people would call them con artists because they pick on, they pick on the, um, the low self-esteem people. These women who dying to be with somebody, don't want to be alone and all this. Okay, you could call them con artists if you want. I just call them, some of them are just lazy. And then you do have some that do work. You have some who, I know a guy, he, he had a great job. And he had a job, he was living in his high-rise apartment. He was living, actually he was living on 72nd Street and Broadway. Very expensive apartment. But he couldn't afford it. So what would he do? Well, you could say like a con artist. He'll he'll get friendly with an elderly gentleman and and have this elderly gentleman, you know, use this elderly gentleman for money, whatever he can't afford, living in that big ass apartment. But now, what is a narcissistic personality disorder? And I'm, the only reason I'm doing this is because after I broke up with my narcissist, I um. I started, I didn't even know he was a narcissist. I had a couple of people, I was explaining to him what I went through with this relationship. And they said, oh, he's a narcissist. A narcissist. So one said, well, Google it. And of course, I Google it. And then it's, this is a whole, it's a whole lot of stuff on it. It's called Narcissist Personality Disorder. And this is what it says. Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD, is a mental health condition that affects how you view yourself and relate to others. Having NPD means you have an excessive need to impress others or feel important. That needs can be strong enough to drive harmful behavior negatively affecting you and those around you. NPD gets its name from Narcissus, a hunter from Greek mythology. According to the myth, Narcissus was so obsessed with his own beauty that he couldn't stop looking at his inflection in the pool of water. He did nothing else but stare at his inflection until he died. While people commonly connect the term Narcissus to physical appearance. Just like in the myth, NPD isn't just about how you look. It can also involve other traits or abilities you have, such as intelligence, charisma, 
artistic skills, athletic ability, wealth, power, success, and more. So now, after reading this and after going on YouTube and looking at all these YouTube videos and trying to figure out well, what the hell was I into? What was my relationship? And I realized my relationship definitely, my last relationship recently, was definitely narcissistic. Because the person I was with was, uh, how you how you put it, thought he was, kept asking me about how good he looks. And I was sad, I don't know. I mean, he wasn't a bad looking guy, but I, I would never put him in the, um, in the beauty contest. I don't think he would win. But anyway, and would, would do all these, well, the thing that was really interesting that I read, that narcissists would shower you with gifts only to get, how they say what a con artist would do, would shower you with gifts to get your confidence your, and, and your, um, your confidence in order to lure you into your bank account, which almost happened. And I'm like, I'm reading this, I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, well... It reads like a con artist. I read you what a con artist is. You know, somebody who gets your trust. Somebody who do all these low, low down things behind your back in order to get you to uh, put money. But I, they claim that a narcissist mainly wants control. They don't care about anything else. They just care about the control. Having control over people. And I thought about that too. And I said, well, I don't know. Um, I'm not one... Well, my narcissist, we had a conversation once, and uh, the conversation went, uh, my only time, I, I don't know, I think I made a podcast of this, my only time that a, uh, a guy proposed to marry me, he wanted to marry me, but he wanted, I was working on Wall Street at the time, and, and he wanted me to give up his, give up my job. He was a lawyer in the World Trade Center, so he had a very good job. He was building two houses, one for him, he claimed, one for us and one for his parents. And he wanted me to give up my Wall Street job, give up my Bronx apartment. Um, and then all I had to do was um, stay home because I'm a writer, do my writing, write my books, you know, whatever, my plays. That's all I had to do and take care of his parents. And long story short, we got into a little tiff and everything and then uh, I was willing to break it off. And then he said that I didn't give the relationship long enough for me to fall in love with him. And I said to him, but you're not looking for love. You're looking for somebody, more like a slave. I said, you want me to depend upon you so that if I did all that, and, oh yeah, we are supposed to get married, by the way. If I did all that and got married and, and didn't have a job, didn't have a place to stay, just, just just with you and take care of your parents, and I decide that's a little bit too much for me, and do you decide to get rid of me? I mean, well, where will that leave me? A lot of people say, well, if he married you, you can always get, but that's not, that's not the point. Don't forget, this is back in the 70s, when uh, I think it was only one state, because he had a house in Vermont, that was the only state that allowed gay marriages. So, and plus he was a lawyer, so who knows what he would fix in the marriage license, whatever. That he'll get, if I left him, I would be, I would get nothing. But I don't know what, I don't call, I don't consider that narcissist. That's what I'm saying. They got this, they make up these, um, these labels for human pers for human personality. You know, there was one girl when I worked on Wall Street. She was she was she was going to school at night to become a psychologist, and she came up to me. She knew I was gay, and she came up to me and she said, "You know, when a straight man goes to jail, they only gay while they're in jail. When they come out of jail, they straight again." I said, <laughs> I laughed and laughed. I said, "Who told you that crap? A con artist is a con. A criminal is a criminal." He's going to do whatever it takes in jail or out of jail to survive. If it means for him to come out of jail and he, and he can get a, a gay man to take care of him, he's going to go with a gay man. He's going to have sex with that gay man because that gay man is going to put a roof over his head and, and food in his stomach. I said, who told you that lie? And she was going to, uh, well, her professor of psychology was. 
I couldn't believe that, you know, this is what I'm getting, this is what I'm getting back at. And the other reason why, I mean, I'm getting off track on this podcast. The podcast was, am I attracted to narcissistic men? I, I don't know. I think I was attracted to good looking men. And every time I saw a good looking man right away, I said, he ain't no good. Because a good looking man, which sometimes we consider narcissist, um, he knows he look good. Or he knows he got a great body. He knows he got the, the pieces that work that everybody wants. And he's going to use that for his advantage. I mean, is that a personality disorder? Or is that a human nature? I don't know. Anyway, you decide. We just heard the craziness that lives inside my head.